In pediatric acne, there's an age range of particular concern. Dr. Sheila Friedlander explained. More than 80% of people are going to get acne some form in their lifetime. And we know that in the neonatal period, approximately 20% of newborns will get acne in that first four weeks of life. And we don't worry about them, and we don't worry about the older children who get acne because it's almost like a physiologic process. The group we worry about are the one to seven year olds because when it occurs in that age range, it's often not physiologic. It's occurring because there's too much androgen around for some reason. So babies, when they're born, the, the newborn's adrenal gland makes androgen short term. There's a little spurt of various hormones. They get acne, but that goes away. And by the time a child's one, their hormones are pretty much in sync. There's no reason for any surges of androgen. So if a child develops acne during that period, it could well be related to a surge of either androgen or something going wrong in the pituitary where the orders are out of sync for normal development. Where could things be going wrong? It could be in the gonads. The child could have a tumor in the ovaries or in the testes. The child could have something going on in the adrenal glands, a tumor, or the child could have the development or the first time we will notice something called congenital adrenal hyperplasia. So that's when the adrenals can't make the normal steroids we need, and instead they make too much androgen. And if they make some steroid, they're not going to get real sick. If kids can't do it at all when they're babies, they're very sick. But if they can sort of do it halfway, they can make the steroids, but in the act of making the normal steroids, they're making too much androgen. So these kids will come in with signs of androgen, and one of the first signs is acne. So in that age group, we want to look at those kids a little more carefully than we would look at a tiny baby or a 14-year-old who comes into your office. So what do you look at? You look, at, you look for signs of androgen. And you will look for, does this child have any hair in the armpits, in the axilla, in the groin? Is there signs of hypertrophy of the testes? In a little bit older a child, if he's talking, is the voice deeper? But what also is very interesting, important to talk to the family. Yes, mom, have you noticed this? Does Jimmy smell funny? And often she'll say, yeah, his armpits, he just smells like a locker room. So that's a sign that there's too much androgen around and the apocrine glands are making sweat that smells bad. Uh, so that's a very important question. And then you want to look at the growth of the child. Has there been a giant spurt? Because often when androgen makes its way into our bloodstream, we start to grow. And we can look at that in terms of just looking at the growth chart. So you may have a child who's been 50th percentile all of his life. He's a normal average Joe. And then all of a sudden he's he's blipped up into the 90th percentile. You need to wonder if there's something going on there. So really important not to drive families or yourself crazy, but to have that higher index of suspicion in that age range, to get the right history, then to do a good physical exam. And in honesty, in that age range, even if I don't get history or physical exam that worries me, if a child has acne, abrupt onset, between one and seven years of age, I will have that child evaluated. And how can you evaluate? Well, it depends on your level of comfort. If you feel better referring out to an endocrinologist, go for it. Um, I was a pediatrician before I was a dermatologist, so I always revert back almost subconsciously and want to figure it out myself. Um, I will get a bone age on these kids. There are a list of labs that one should consider, including testosterone, free and total testosterone, DHEA sulfate, which is the adrenal um, kind of hormone androgen that we're going to look at. Uh, people look at androstene diamond, 17 hydroxy progesterone. So there's a list of five or six labs that you would want to get and a bone age. And then if they're all normal, you can feel comfortable, but I would still follow the child along. If they're abnormal, obviously you need your endocrinologist's help in dealing with it. And so you can have central reasons. You can have precocious puberty where the brain, the hypothalamus and the pituitary just for some reason decide to start too early. You can have uh, problems in the adrenals or you can have problems in the gonads. So those are the three areas where things may go awry and we want to be able to identify it early and help the kids who have that problem. In the new onset acne uh, between uh, ages one and seven years, how often is it due to these types of problems? 
In my experience, new onset acne in that age range is pretty uncommon. In the cases that I've seen, I would say at least 30% of those cases have been a problem. But that's just my numbers. I, I can't speak to nationally what the number is, but I know that in that age range, it is much, much higher than other age ranges. But you have to have the right diagnosis. Sometimes people are looking at a one and a half year old and thinking, oh, he has acne, when he has flat warts, or he has molluscum, or more commonly, he has ker keratosis pilaris, which all dermatologists are familiar with it in the older kids, but sometimes in young babies it can be confusing. So if the child has any of those things, then you're going down the wrong track. And the other very important one for dermatologists to remember is angiofibromas, because angiofibromas are often the first sign of tuberous sclerosis and often present at around five years of age, a little earlier than you would expect for acne. And they can often be red acneiform papules. They love to cluster around the nasal ala, central face, and they don't look like the textbook pictures. When kids are older and have angiofibromas, they're big, they coalesce, they're flesh colored. Early on, these can be missed often. People think, oh, they're acne. So that's another thing that I want you to think about. And in that case, it's the distribution, the clustering around the nose. And generally, that's occurring in your kids who are a little bit older, four to five, but still in that one to seven age range that I told you about. So if you were to ask me how often bumps in that age range are a concern, enough that we need to really evaluate every child who truly has acne. But make sure it is acne. Make sure it's not angiofibromas. When in doubt, biopsy. I've had cases many cases where I had to biopsy to be sure. And it's interesting, it's almost always been angiofibromas. When I was in doubt and I got the biopsy, it was angiofibromas. Um, and then in the, in the other kids, get your labs. Is the treatment of the acne in this age group of one to seven uh, years old, if the hormonal uh, problems are found that you talked about earlier, is the treatment of the acne just addressing the underlying problem, or are you also helping those kids with the, with the acne? It depends what the first cause is. If the child has an adrenal tumor, the surgeons are going to go in and remove it. I have not had a case of that, but I have had children with congenital, partial congenital adrenal hyperplasia, and those kids need steroids. They don't need my acne meds as much as they need systemic steroids, very small doses, to try to circumvent, you know, to, to calm their adrenals down and get their adrenals to stop overproducing androgens. However, even when those kids are on steroids, oftentimes we can be of help. Oftentimes our treatments can help them. If children have precocious puberty, often they'll, they'll be put on treatments, sometimes they won't. So I don't walk away from those kids. Often they are put on appropriate treatments and families still want my involvement. But it goes always to first cause. If the child's overproducing androgen in a way that we can fix, that's what should be done first. If they have a condition where people are working on that but they're still having problems, then I will add my treatment armamentarium to see if I can help.